Welcome to the Hotel Moment Podcast, presented by Revenate, the podcast where we talk to leaders in the hospitality industry. If you're looking for trends, perspectives, and stories from leaders in travel and hospitality, you're in the right place. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Hotel Moment Podcast. I am your host, Karen Stevens, the Chief Revenue Officer of Revenate. And today, I am delighted to be joined by Amanda Dew, who is the head of e-commerce at Penta Hotels. Welcome, Amanda. Hi, Karen. Thank you so much for having me today. Oh, it's a pleasure. You know, we've done a lot of these podcasts over the last, call it, mm, eight or nine months, and you're only the second woman that I've had on the show. So I'm very excited. I love all the dudes. I'm happy about the dudes, but it sure is nice to have a powerhouse like yourself join us today. So you've got a lot of cool experience, and I can't wait to dive into that. But before we do that, I wanted to start with some questions that we ask all of our guests just to get us warmed up. So if you'll indulge me, yeah, I'll go with question number one. So first question, when did you first start work in the industry and do you remember your first day on the job? I started working in the industry, I think, 10 years ago and it was never my plan because not like other hoteliers, I never started tourism management or hospitality. I studied English and accounting as a bachelor degree. So all of my uni classmates, they went either to the banks or big firms. And I was kind of the only one who ended up in the hotel. I'm very happy about my decision until today. And my first job was a social media executive. During that time when social media just started emerging and nobody really knew how it works and nobody holds a master degree on digital marketing, for example. And I still remember my first day on the job. I was so amazed by how big the back end of the hotel is. (laughs) (laughs) Because as a customer, I always saw how big, how it is from the house of the hotel. But on the first day, I was like, I almost got lost. I was like, oh, wow, there's so much going on behind the scenes. Yeah, that's great. Can I ask you, where'd you go to university? I was in China. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. That is very cool. So you learned English as a second language in China. Wow, that's great. And now, wow, that's huge. Amazing. Okay, so second question. What is the most uplifting moment so far in your career? Well, it's a, it's a tough one, and I think there were so many. If I have to pick one, I would say that when I firstly had my own team uh, when I was working in Malaysia for, for IHG group. So I built the whole team from the scratch, also introduced the digital marketing expertise concept to the, to the region, to Southeast Asia region, and hired all of the non-hotelier digital geeks at that time in the team. And I think I remember that when we had our first meeting together, that there was a moment I feel like, oh, wow, I've already achieved something. And I believe with the team and there will be more to come. And it, of course, turned out to be a very successful story. So I still remember the day when I have everybody sitting there and when we had the first team meeting. Yeah. Isn't that cool? That's a great, that's a great moment to look back on. Okay, this one, number three, is a little more personal. So what is the most striking experience you've had so far in terms of a personal holiday or stay or food experience, some trip or travel that has been the most striking so far? I have to say it's my trip to India, New Delhi. It was such a striking experience that I, I still can see those colors vividly when, when I think about it. And all those spices, right? I like spicy food, but all those different types of spices, the Indian food compose, it's, it's really amazing. But I think the most important thing or most thing that I remember is that the people who working there, who working in hospitality industry there, you could feel that they are so proud and so passionate about their job and about what they do. And of course, if it's coming from their heart, so the service level is really different. And you feel very well, uh, warmly welcome there. Oh, that's really cool. I've never been to India and I would love to go. I certainly have a lot of colleagues who are Indian and it's such a beautiful, colorful culture, like you said. It's, it's great. Okay, fourth one. Have you met any celebrities while you've been in the trenches? Surprisingly, none. <laughs> none? <laughs> Yes, All right. I'm Usually. probably the first one. <laughs> you are, yeah. <laughs> Usually someone's got an exemption. All right, well, we're going to, well, and I know you've been working probably, it's been a while since you've been in the hotel itself. You, you're um, yeah, and I guess because I was most of the time in the office, not like colleagues working in the operations. So I'm sure. more in the back of the hotel. But I, I met a lot of normal people, I think, who inspired me. And yeah. I, I was often 
very surprised to hear those stories. I would never guessed when I, when I firstly met them. So yeah, not really ce- celebrities, but many fantastic individuals, I would say. Okay, well, that, that is a great dovetail into the fifth question, which is who are the women at work you have been most inspired by? I was very lucky when I firstly moved to Singapore from China and I had a group of women when I was working with the Radisson Hotel Group. And in our commercial team, we had a very international team with, with nationalities like me from China, Canada, Turkey, and Finland, and of course, uh, Singaporeans, local people there. So for all of those international team members within the commercial team, we arrived in the Singapore more or less similar time and we supported each other tremendously and, and developed a great friendship until today. So I think we are role models to ourselves, to each other, and we inspire each other a lot. So we still keep in touch, keep each other updated on our career advances and, and just life in general. Yeah, that is so cool. You know, we have an office in Singapore and I I just love Singapore so much because it is such a melting pot. It's so diverse in terms of people coming from all over the world and all different backgrounds. And and I think you're right that that makes, that makes for really awesome learnings. And, you know, you can just learn so much from the people coming from all those different places. So very cool. All right. Well, thank you for that. This is awesome. See, I've already learned something. So um, <laughs> why don't we start by, would you tell me a little bit about who Penta Hotels are? What does the portfolio look like? What do you specialize in? All of that good stuff. Yeah, Penta, Penta we have across Europe 20 plus hotels. And the Penta as a brand, it's all about social interactions, general service, and chilled vibes. So we value the communication, community, and comfort. We offer the lively neighborhood hotels in those appealing locations in Europe. And at the heart of each Penta Hotel is our Penta Lounge, which is a concept we pioneered years ago, where we offer a sweet spot for our customers between our vibrant and laid-back lifestyle. So for, for the customers to relax, play, and recharge. Oh, that's really cool. So, you know, you mentioned a little bit about, you know, the guest experience in a Penta Hotel. And I have a quote from you, actually, that reads, with the support of technology, we still need to use the customer data in emotionally intelligent ways. Having a customer-centric mindset is key in success. So it sounds like you create those chilled vibes. That's what's happening on the surface. But what's going on behind the scenes? And can you give me a little more color on that quote? Yeah, of course. I think we talk a lot about digital guest journey, technology, how we could rev- revolutionize the way we in- operate hotel. But I think the way it's it's really not the core. It's, it's not how we revolutionize the way we operate the hotel, but it's really how we using technology in a more emotionally intelligent way to understand the customer best. So for us, I think to get the customer data right and to better ser- serve our guests is the key. The analysis of customer related data, which is captured through the whole digital or through a whole journey before they even interact with the hotel, right? So at the same time, we also want to understand how we optimize those customer related processes and to both from the customer side and from employee side. Most of the time we forgot how the employee, how the front desk operates and we have this great big idea on how we want to deliver the customer success. But I think it's very important for us to really also look at from the employee side, how whether it is feasible, how we make it happen. And of course, in addition to our own data, we, we also look at what are the customer trends and, and research data in the customer behavior to make sure that we make the customer centric decisions, especially after COVID, right? The, the, the whole need is, is different. So Offering a seamless travel experience is not add-on service anymore. It's 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 must have. So from this, I think, you know, to to really understand what customer want, what they need is essential for us to to succeed. Yeah, it's kind of where vision meets operations, right? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> right? It's like, like hey, that's that. a great idea. How do we make that actually work? You know, so, you know, it's awesome kind of understanding a little bit more about your background and how you started in the digital space. And you've had so much influence in that space. Um, I want to dive into your ABCD framework. So I've heard you speak about this, but our listeners might not know about it. Can you tell us what that is and, and how you use that in personalizing the guest journey? So the ABCD pr- uh, 
framework is more on how we did the whole digital transformation in the Panda Hotel. So A, B, C, D, the A is more on the analysis part, analytics dimension, which includes what I uh, just explained earlier, the analysis of customer-related data captured, captured through the whole journey. And the B is the business part. So to understand what is important for the hotels itself and the whole business the changes of the business conditions to improve the customer experience. So the internal business conditions are related to changes in management decisions, for example, organizations' missions, for example. And C is the most important part, and which I, I always put it as a core, is our customers. So the core and the entire customer interaction journey. And the D is the digital, one of the most important enablers, I would say, the technology part to make all of those transformation happen. Wow, that's so cool. That's so cool. So now we're going to shift gears a little bit because I, I mentioned um, that I think you were really at the forefront. Well, you, you kind of said it yourself as well. When you first got into the digital space, that it was really very new. It was kind of the, it was just starting, which has not that long ago, but it's just starting to evolve. So I noticed that you're also really involved in Web3 and the metaverse and all these things. So can you just, there's a lot, probably a lot of listeners out there like me who, I've heard a little bit about this, maybe don't know as much as we should. Um, can you just kind of give us an overview of what your interest is there and how you think it applies to hospitality or how it might in the future? Yeah, so I think, well, let, let's get some concepts straight maybe and when, we, when we jump into that. Web3 is, is the name that is given what some people call the next phase of the, of the internet, right? Which runs on the blockchain technology and is decentralized. So if we say... Web 1 was all about reading information, and we are now in kind of a Web 2 and Web 3 transition. Web 2 was about co-creation, especially those user-generated content. We can publish all those on the social media. And then Web 3 is about the ownership, and all of those is, is based on the blockchain. And Metaverse is more of the, the internet where it creates a new way we experience the digital world. I would say, imagine the whole website, and you just lift it up as a 3D and you explore it around you. So <laughs> I would say it's, it's an interconnected digital reality where we become avatars to communicate, experience, work, play, and do things we never, which were never possible before. And what, what does it relate to, to the hotel and to the travel? And, and I think we, we talk a lot about you know, what, what happens before they even come to the hotel, before they even start traveling, right? I think that Web3 area or the metaverse part would enhance or uh, is extension of this whole travel experience. So where the customers can really like go into your hotel, experience the hotel and to pick the room they want to make sure they, they know what they, they are buying for, I would say, and to, to really have a good first impression and, a, and expect, expectation before they, they come to experience the hotel. And I, I, I know a lot of people also say, like, would people then just stay at home with their goggles and not traveling? No. <laughs> then, yeah, you know, I agree with you. After COVID, <laughs> we also say, okay, should, would home office replace human interaction, in-person interaction? No, it will not. But it, it just adds another dimension to the whole travel experience and to our own experience, I think, well, will add definitely more uh, benefits to, to hotels in the future and to customers, for sure. Absolutely. And I agree with you 100%. First of all, it's really exciting to think about that kind of technology where you could actually walk into a hotel and understand how everything is laid out and get an idea of things uh, before you go. But I agree with you 100% that people shouldn't be nervous that all of a sudden people will do that instead of traveling because... We all need to get get moving again. So that that's that's really interesting. And I know. So we're recording this right before ITB. It'll probably come out after ITB. But you're based in Munich in Germany, and we've got ITB coming up in Berlin next week. I believe is it next week? Yeah. Yes. Next week. Exciting because it has it's like it's been you know gone for three years. So can you give us some highlights? What you're looking forward to? We'll check back in with you afterwards. But I know you've got some a speaking panel and some other things. But what are you looking to forward to mostly about ITB and coming back this year? I think definitely is the interaction with the, with, with the different people and to see okay what are the new things out there. And I'm I'm also speaking at one panel about loyalty in travel industry. 
and a keynote on how hotels enter Web3 era. Oh, um, so no. by looking at the content <laughs> <laughs> and also other different tracks, I'm very excited to see there are a lot of technology focused, future focused topics are going to be discussed there. And I think that's the most exciting part for me. Well, that's great. Well, again, this will probably come out after ITV, but if you're listening and you want to learn more about Web3 and the metaverse, then find, find Amanda's talk from, from ITV to get more information. Yeah. So one last thing I wanted to talk to you about was a little bit more, and this is kind of all tied together, but uh, about AI and hotel tech. So artificial mm-hmm. intelligence. And do you think that hoteliers are doing a good job of leveraging that technology today? How do you see it? How do you see it evolving I think from the marketing perspective, we started using it quite, quite early space already, or quite early stage already. Like when, we, when we're looking at all those customer data, how we personalize their, 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 their offer, and also like how we do those targeted advertisements. It was all powered by AI. We just didn't really talk about it in the past. And probably everybody come across the chat GPT now, and it's suddenly yep. a, a huge topic. <laughs> Again, uh, this year, and, and, and I think for the hotel side, there's some misconceptions from our side that saying, well, that's the biggest fear, right? I, every time when we see a new technology, we always kind of got scared. Like, would that replace the hotel staff? Like, w- would that replace all the people working in the hotel with all those robots delivering the room service? Or whether those AI tools can only be run by those highly specialized data scientists, for example, scientists, which I think shouldn't be see it that way. And I think AI is like technology is not everything, right? It's just an enabler and we should be better utilizing it and not think that we have to have a huge amount of money to invest to, to it. And as I mentioned, you can start very small to better understand your customer first. And the whole journey, the customer journey, make sure that one is smooth and to help their tools can help you optimize your, your like revenue forecast, demand and better plan your, your manpower and your labor force in the hotel. And we are also, we were also piloting some tools that to, could predict food wastage, for, for example. So there are many ways to utilize in this technology. And I think hotels now start looking at it from a, a more holistic angle, like different angles, and not only from the marketing side, but also from revenue side and marketing and revenue, how we work together to better utilize AI, right? They have great tool to do forecasting. We have great tool to target customer and how we combine those to provide customer the, the, the offer that they are looking for. And also from operational side, I think, as a huge potential where they can really make use of the technology and at the same time to be more efficient. So not only boost the guest satisfaction, but also the employee happiness at work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of eliminate some of the monotony or some of the, the jobs that the, the part of the jobs that are not as, as engaging as, as others maybe is a good way to think about it. Yeah. So what, what advice would you give to maybe a hotelier out there who isn't a part of a group that's advanced thinking like this? And where would you suggest that somebody go just to start to educate themselves on these kinds of things? I don't know if there's anything that comes to mind. I think ITB is a great opportunity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hopefully with. you were there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> go to shows, go to trade shows. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Go to those conferences. Uh, there are so many conferences after COVID and so many that uh, a year that I, I couldn't even attend uh, most of them. And I think really to, to look for those information online to see what other topics you are interested in. There's those conferences just focusing on customer journey. There's conferences just focusing on hotel technology. I think to get yourself out there, be open. I think that's the most important attitude. Just, you know, to to get to know what you don't know before. So that will be my advice. Yeah, that is fantastic advice. Well, thank you so much, Amanda. This has been an amazing conversation. So just so our listeners know, where can they find more information on Penta Hotels? So our URL is at pentahotels.com. You can also find us on LinkedIn (laughs) and Instagram. Yes, And Instagram. (laughs) Okay, awesome. Thanks so much for the conversation today, Amanda. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Hotel Moment Podcast. Make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're watching on YouTube, 
Please like the video and subscribe for more content. For more information, head to hotelmomentpodcast.com. The Hotel Moment Podcast is presented by Revenate and produced by Make More Media.